Hi, welcome to On the Invest Minds. I'm Tai Hui, the Chief Market Strategist for Asia Pacific at JP Morgan Asset Management. And thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time to learn about what investors are thinking about right now and how that fits in with building the right portfolio. And today I want to take another look at the Chinese market, which had a spectacular week before going into the National Day holiday. Since September 24th, Chinese equities have been on the tear. The CSI 300 index has surged by 25%. The Hang Seng China Enterprise Index, or the HA Index, is up 17.5%. And NMCI China has climbed 21.3%. This impressive rally has triggered by a joint announcement by the People's Bank of China, the China Securities Regulatory Commission, and also the National Financial Regulatory Administration on September 24th. They unveiled a series of economic stimulus measures, followed by an earlier than expected Politburo meeting on September 26, that prioritized growth, housing, jobs, and also social welfare. Now, we have seen two significant market rallies since 2022. The first was in the fourth quarter of 2022, as China emerged from the pandemic lockdowns. And the second was in the second quarter of 2024, driven by recovery expectations. Now, both rallies eventually fizzled out as concerns about China's economic outlook resurfaced. A key question would be whether this current bout of rally can be sustained. Now, as we discussed in last week's episode, Beijing has taken similar policy steps in the past two years, but these efforts were often in isolation and had limited economic impact. What's different this time is the coordinated approach by various ministries and regulators, signaling a sense of urgency to boost momentum in the housing market and domestic consumption as well as the stock market. Now, after the initial excitement, it is crucial to remain calm and patient. The policies announcements are very much multifaceted. On much policy, the required reserve ratio, lending rates, mortgage rates have all been reduced to boost liquidity and also lower funding costs. Additionally, six large banks have received additional capital injections. On the property market, the down payment requirement for a second home has been reduced from 25% to 15% in line with the first home. The PBOC has created a 3 billion yuan relending facility to support regional state-owned companies in purchasing unsold homes. This facility originally covered 60% of the principles of bank loans, but the credit support ratio has now been raised to 100%. For the stock market, the central bank is setting up a 500 billion yuan swap facility with security brokers and also insurance companies to fund stock purchases. They're also looking to establish a specialized refinancing facility for listed companies to buy back shares. On fiscal policy, the government may allow for a higher fiscal deficits to reduce taxes, increase spending, and also facilitate more fiscal transfers from the central government to local governments, which have seen a drop in revenue from lower land sales. Another way to boost government spending could be to raise the debt issuance quota, as local government bond issuance has already reached over 90% of the 2024 quota by the end of September. Now, good intentions need to be followed by actions. As Chinese investors return to the markets from the holidays, they will be looking for more details on how these policy announcements will be implemented. For example, a consumption coupon may provide a short-term boost to spending, but raising income tax thresholds could lead to a more sustained increase in spending. Fiscal policy's importance lies in its immediate benefit to the economy, unlike monetary policy, which has to work through the financial system. Now, in the past two years, rate cuts and liquidity injections have yet to boost credit growth or economic activities due to cautious sentiment amongst households and the corporate sector. Could the surge in stock prices and the positive wealth effect unlock household savings, translating into more consumption or even more constructive sentiment towards the housing market? Well, the National Day Tourism and Consumption numbers could provide an early glimpse of the sentiment change, potentially pointing towards some short-term improvement in discretionary spending. For the housing market, high inventory levels and financial constraints amongst developers imply it could still take several quarters before the sector stabilizes. Overall, additional policy steps will be needed to boost economic activities and confidence. The policies announced so far can help smooth out the deleveraging process, but balance sheet repair still needs to take place. Structural shifts in the economy will require a different set of industrial policy responses, which in turn will create jobs to match the new labor market structure. 
Then there's the international angle. Beijing's coordinated policies to support the economy are a positive step for the Chinese economy and its market. However, external factors such as geopolitical uncertainties remain. With the U.S. elections only a month away, many investors argue that the U.S. view of China as an economic and geopolitical rival is a bipartisan consensus. However, policy implementation details matter. Between the former President Trump's pledge of a 60% tariff on all Chinese exports and a potentially more targeted approach from Vice President Harris, the impact on the Chinese and global economy could vary considerably. Moreover, how international investors manage potential geopolitical risks may influence the duration of the current market rally. For now, international investors may choose to wait for the economic data to bottom out and for this new policy direction to solidify. Buy-in from international long-term real money investors, when it comes, could add to the sustainability of the current rally in the Chinese stock market. Now, what does that mean for the markets? Now, the market rally in the past week showed what depressed valuations, light investor positioning, and the right policy catalysts can do to a market. MSCI forward price to earnings ratio has risen from 9.1 times on September 24th to 10.5 times, which is broadly in line with a 15-year average. So, Chinese equities are no longer super cheap on a forward earnings basis. In the early stage of market recovery, further valuation re-rating that sustains the current market rally is possible. However, this will need to be followed by an improving earnings outlook to underpin a longer-term market performance. The latest policy measures may help to support corporate earnings over the next 12 to 18 months if the economy responds positively. Between the onshore A-share market and the offshore Hong Kong H-share market, the relative discounts of the latter still makes it look attractive. Moreover, the technology and communication service sector could benefit from a cyclical recovery. Many of these tech giants have improved their operational leverage over the past three years with better profitability. Economic improvement could also help investors better appreciate these companies' effort to handle regulatory changes since 2021, more stringent cost controls, engaging in share buybacks, and also increasing dividend payouts. Now, beyond Chinese equities, investors may opt for other proxies that could benefit from an economic upturn in China. European consumer goods and commodities are two potential areas of focus. While some investors may prefer the China-like exposure through these ideas, this usually does not deliver the same benefits as directly investing in China and could be complicated by other external factors. For example, a strong China usually translates into high commodity prices, notably oil. However, Saudi Arabia and OPEC may choose to step up production to regain market share, offsetting the possible increase in oil demand from China. Asian economic performance could also gain additional support from China's demand for regional exports in goods as well as tourism. This could facilitate a broader recovery in Asian equities beyond the semiconductors and tech hardware exporters. Between China opting for more aggressive economic support and global central banks such as the Fed embarking on much policy easing, the current global economic policy landscape is supportive of risk assets. Even if the recent sharp rally in Chinese equities may face some short-term pullback pressure, Beijing's overall policy stance should reinforce our call for a well-diversified asset allocation in Asian and global equities. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share this with your friends and colleagues and also subscribe. If you have any topics that you would like to hear from us, please reach out to your JP Morgan Asset Management client advisors. I'm Tai Hui. See you next time to discuss what's on Invest Minds. This content is a general communication being provided for informational purposes only. It is educational in nature and not designed to be taken as advice or a recommendation for any specific investment product, strategy, plan feature, or other purpose in any jurisdiction, nor is it a commitment from J.P. Morgan Asset Management or any of its subsidiaries to participate in any of the transactions mentioned herein. Any examples used are generic, hypothetical, and for illustration purposes only. This material does not contain sufficient information to support an investment decision, and it should not be relied upon by you in evaluating the merits of investing in any securities or products. In addition, users should make an independent assessment of the legal, regulatory, tax, credit, and accounting implications and determine 
together with their own financial professional, if any investment mentioned herein is believed to be appropriate to their personal goals. Investors should ensure that they obtain all available relevant information before making any investment. Any forecasts, figures, opinions, or investment techniques and strategies set out are for information purposes only based on certain assumptions and current market conditions and are subject to change without prior notice. All information presented herein is considered to be accurate at the time of production, but no warranty of accuracy is given and no liability in respect of any error or omission is accepted. It should be noted that investment involves risks, the value of investments and the income from them may fluctuate in accordance with market conditions and taxation agreements and investors may not get back the full amount invested. Both past performance and yields are not reliable indicators of current and future results. J.P. Morgan Asset Management is the brand for the asset management business of J.P. Morgan Chase & Company and its affiliates worldwide.